This data shows the chemotaxis index calculated for nematode worms having been subjected to three levels of pretreatment using a therapeutic drug at levels 0, 1 and 2. We wish to test whether the different levels of treatment affect the chemotaxis index and we will use both the one-way ANOVAR and the non-parametric equivalent, the Kruskal-Wallis test. In a separate video, we have already checked the normality and equality of variance conditions for using the ANOVAR. So we will use STAT, ANOVAR, general linear model. The response in this case is the chemotaxis index. And we're testing whether this is dependent on the level of treatment. So treatment is our model. In anticipation of getting a significant difference between at least two levels, we can test comparisons and we can do a pairwise comparison between the different levels of the treatment and we can test the significance of each pairwise comparison using different post hoc tests, Tuki, Bonferroni, Sidak. So we will leave it ticked in this case just as Tuki and we will also request grouping information of the different levels and confidence interval of the differences between the different levels. So we click OK. If we wish to confirm the normality and equality of variance conditions, we can click Graphs and we can choose to select the standardized residuals for testing. And we could, in this case, select a four in one output of different plots. Press OK. We can also display the effect of the different treatment levels by using factor plots. And we could select treatment for the main effect. OK. And then we can run the ANOVAR. The main effect plot for the index shows the average value of the index apparently decreasing as we go from treatment level 0 to treatment level 2. We need to check the ANOVAR to confirm whether this difference is significant. The 4-in-1 plot of residuals repeats the graphs that we saw in the previous video where the residuals uh, lie fairly close to this diagonal line which represents a true normal distribution and the distribution of residuals at the different measured levels are very similar, suggesting that there is an equality of variance between the different levels. The ANOVAR calculation results are printed in the session window and we start with the standard ANOVAR output table where treatment is the factor being tested and error represents the uncertainty variation within each level of treatment. The F-test tests for a difference in the variability between the levels of treatment and within the levels of treatment, giving a p-value of less than 0 0.0005. This shows that we can reject the null hypothesis and we can accept that there is a significant difference between at least two levels of the treatment. We now look at the pairwise comparison tests to see where this difference lies. First of all, if we look at the grouping information using the Tukey method, we can see that treatment levels 0 and 1 are identified as being in group A and treatment level 2 as in group B. And the statement below says that means that do not share a letter are significantly different. So levels 1 and 2 are significantly different, but levels 0 and 1 share group a identification, so they are not significantly different. So this grouping information tells us we have a significant difference between 1 and 2, but not between 0 and 1. We can now continue with the confidence intervals calculations. And this does this pairwise. First of all, it takes treatment level 0 and compares that with levels 1 and 2 and calculates the confidence interval of the difference between 0 and 1 in the first line and between 0 and 2 in the second line. So between 0 and 1, the confidence interval of the difference goes from minus 0.2426 to plus 
0 0.0091. So this includes the possibility of the difference being zero. So if the difference could be zero, we cannot say that there is a significant difference between level zero and level one. We can see this displayed graphically in that the confidence interval along this horizontal axis is shown between about minus 0.24, which is this value here, to just greater than zero, which was this value here. And this range, the confidence interval range, does include the possibility that the difference between zero and one is zero, and there is no significant difference between zero and one. However, between treatment level zero and treatment level two, the confidence interval is entirely in negative values between minus 0.3835, which is here, to minus 0.1472, which is here. It does not include the value of zero, so we can be confident in saying that there is a significant difference, i.e. it is non-zero, there is a significant difference between level zero and level two. And similarly, between level one and level two, the confidence interval is again calculated and displayed here, and it does not include the value zero. So we can say that there is also a significant difference between level zero and level two. Although this data did satisfy the normality and equality of variance tests for the ANOVA, we can still use it as an example for doing the non-parametric equivalent of the ANOVAR, the Kruskal-Wallace test, for which we do STAT, non-parametrics, Kruskal-Wallace, and quite simply the response is the chemotaxis index, the factor that we're testing is treatment, and we click OK. The results in this case perform the Kruskal-Wallace test, showing a p-value of 0 0.001, again showing a significant difference between at least two of the levels of treatment. If we wish to test where the difference lies between the three levels, we could use the Mann-Whitney test between individual pairs of levels, but because we would be doing multiple tests, we would have to use the Bonferroni correction to change the significance levels for those tests.